Today I thought I'd play with truth tables a little bit. So for any Boolean function that takes a, a binary, two binary inputs, a zero or a one, and gives you one output, there must be 16 possible sets of outputs and 16 possible functions. And to write them all out, all you have to do is count in binary. This is something I already know how to do, and I think it's actually quite fun. Most of these Boolean functions have a very simple name or correspond to a single value, like zero or one or your AND function, or just X or just Y, your OR function, your NOT X, your NOT Y, your X OR, exclusive OR function, your NAND function, your NOR function, your exclusive NOR function. And four of these don't seem to have names, but actually I looked it up and I found that one of them, this one with the output 1101, has the name imply. Something to read more about later. But the other three don't seem to have names. They can just be summed up as x and not y, not x and y, and x or not x and not y. So that's something I learned today. Then I thought to myself, I better check if I actually understand Boolean algebra as well as I think I do. So let's just take a really simple example of a Boolean function that outputs one for everything. I can write this out for every possible combination of inputs um, with combinations of not, and, and or gets pretty long, but you can do it. It's much shorter to just write it using this other Boolean algebra notation where multiplication stands for the and operator, the addition sign stands for the or operator, and a bar over the variable stands for not. And if I understand Boolean algebra as well as I think I do, I should be able to prove that this long thing is just equal to 1. I should be able to write it as just 1, because a function that outputs 1, regardless of the inputs, uh, is basically not really a function, it's just the number 1. So let's see what I remember here. I rewrote it again, and then I noticed a pattern. I can use the distributive law here. I'm very proud and a bit surprised that I actually remember that from algebra. So I rewrote it like that, and then I noticed I can basically factor these out. Why? Because not y or y is always going to be true. It either is or it isn't. So one of them is always going to be true. I can just rewrite that as one. And then I confirmed that x and one is always going to be x. It's some sort of identity in Boolean algebra, I guess. I don't really know what the name of it would be, but I know that it is true. So then I can just rewrite this as not x or x, and once again, it's the same It's the same law that I came across before, like to be or not to be. It's, there's something poetic about, about that. It is always going to be true. So I can just rewrite this entire function as the number one. And yay, I think, I'm not sure, but is this a proof? Did I just write my first proof? That would be cool if I did. I mean, it's not exactly an impressive one or anything, not exactly new, but new to me, because I've never tried to do this before. Huh, that felt good.